Um, I, I think one, you must commend them of what they've done so far because without the local content law in the first place, all of us will be here. And the, the major part of what they've done is that they've created enabling factors, enabling situations, enabling environments for everybody to actually piggyback on, which wasn't there before. Uh, as I look at it, that if from the person that actually started the, the private bill, which I met coincidentally, and the passion at which he spoke about it was one of those things that made me feel this thing would work. And when it became law, we were able to look at things that were involved in our own industry or that were part of our own industry or were enshrined into it in our own industry in terms of the volumes of cables that needed to be done. And one part of the law that was one key part, and a lot of people didn't notice on day one, but was literally slotted in by the person that actually promoted it, said, I voted. He said, none of you did it. And you've all been here for 40 years and nobody did it. But I'm putting this there to give you something to push towards. And it was only just saying 45 meters and nobody even made one meter. And that being there pushed the goalpost. To me, that was a goalpost mover. And I looked at it and said, that was encouraging enough. It took us four years of the law. By 2014, we created the first factory in Nigeria for high voltage. And that changes how you think. If that law wasn't there, that amount of money, because it took $28 million to put such an investment in, and the banks that went into it with us, it was a pioneering project because it made us only the sixth country in the continent and the first factory in Nigeria, but the sixth country in the continent to actually produce that thing. Uh, mid high voltage, medium to high voltage. But the law encouraged it. If it wasn't there, Sincerely, we would still be one of those countries that aspires to do it, but are importing the cable. All right, so it's more or less taking opportunities that the environment provided. Yes, it is. All right, then. So when you look at uh, where we are, it's very interesting. You, you bring it up from when it was a bill, and then it came out an act, and now we're seeing it in fruition. But what do you think we should aspire to be? We, we should always aspire that the whole point of the law is to create first steps. Because if you look at the law, the law never said any parts or some parts that we didn't even have first step. It gave us first steps. It didn't say go and do it 100%, which means you didn't have infrastructure or you didn't have those facilities. How do you tell someone stop doing it and do it 100% here? It created the facility for us to start, and we have started. Now, we should not have aspire to expect it to happen overnight. We expect it to over, over, over time. As long as we continue in this right direction, which they are doing today, I don't see why we would not surpass even the position of the law at a later date. Mm. I expect we will meet what the law expects at, I think, every aspect of the law. And then the next thing is for us to aspire to be even beyond it. And uh, that's the possibilities. All right, then. But when you look at it, basically, then, how would you say it has helped to push to build more globally competitive companies or indigenous companies in the, in the oil and gas industry? I think it's done a lot because if you look at it, some of those investments will not have come into Nigeria in the first place if the law didn't exist too. Now, the investments are not just investments that come into play. The investments are meant to come into play to be competitive. Now, before they become actually very competitive, that first set of investments comes in play. The second thing, the efficiency, the training gets them better as they grow in capacity, they become more efficient at it. In every business is a learning curve. As you get more efficient, as you get more productivity from your product, you get better price deliveries. You get better price deliveries, you get better competitiveness. Now, the good thing is, things like that, if you look at it from our own perspective, by looking at it from cable today, if I look at it from the perspective of some of those investments, today it's made us so competitive that we're almost pricing input pricing. So, yes, it's only how many years from the law, 2010 to 2018, we've achieved eight years. Now, but, and we're going to the ninth year. And what we've achieved now, competitiveness. If we didn't put in those investments in five years ago in 2014, and I'm looking at some of them today, 
I might not be as competitive as I am today because investments happen, some cost is happening in terms of you started driving down your cost, you're paying down your capex as you're going on. As your capex is paying down, your cost of funds comes down. Your ability to be profitable gets better. Then your ability to drive down the price automatically becomes a benefit to you. So we build capacity. Over time, we build abilities. Then over time, we can build profitability. And yeah. that's the whole benefit of it. Okay, so then let's look at how you have been engaging because I think a feedback loop it needs, to be, needs to be in place for, for any kind of development to have a staying power. Okay. So how have you been engaging with the, the, the board you know, in getting some of these initiatives out there? I, I, I think over the last, uh, especially over the last two years, the board has been very active. Uh, the board did exist before then, but I, I think they've been extremely active. And they are now, I'll say, very proactive than reactive you know the the difference is at the beginning the board was more of a reactive board now it's a proactive board it's aiming eye now the the advantage when you become proactive is you're pushing rather than waiting now i, I look at them now being proactive as being an enabler or a factor of advantage for the whole country as a whole and when the you look at the board today I see it for most of us that are Nigerians or Nigerian aspiring companies that want to invest into something to supply the oil and gas industry. You are actually so encouraged. It's ridiculous. I think they, you go there, they have this, I think they're all on I power us or something. They, they have this hype that it is possible. We can push you. And that is encouraging. So it, where you see Nigerians, and I've had the board visit my factory, and the visit also changed my mindset. If you look at it, between the time the ES and his team and everybody visited, we decided to put in another $40 million investment, which we would not have put in if not the type of encouragement we saw after the visit. So you can look at the holistic view. If a visit pushes someone else to put in extra investment, it just means they're doing something right. 